G'day there guys. I'm Jesse Crow, the traveling scientist here in quarantine in Perth, Australia. It's day nine today. Day nine. I've been doing this for nine days now. Day nine. I'm feeling fine. It's pretty good. Um, I'm going to be out of here soon. TJ's here. G'day, TJ. Jeez, I miss you, buddy. Oh, why do people message me now? Why you got to wait until now to send me messages? Um, it's day nine of quarantine. I'm here in Perth, Australia. I'm nearly allowed back out into the open world. I've got a few more days and a few more stories to tell. Yesterday, I was telling the story of how I punched somebody at a wedding, how I ended up getting a wicked job, and how I got to go heli skiing. Actually, with TJ, who just went heli skiing recently. Man, that looked incredible. I'm jealous. I hope you had a good time. Um, yes, that was yesterday's story. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of what happened when COVID struck. Because yesterday where we left it off, everything was going great. Had a wicked job, got to go heli skiing. And then all of a sudden, COVID happened. And basically, g'day, Fliss. Thought you'd be too busy to join today. Uh, all of a sudden, COVID struck. Uh, job gone. Couldn't go snowboarding anymore. Everything just closed down. And I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the story today of how I ended up, uh, yeah, then we got fired and, um, and then I'm going to tell you the story of how I ended up, uh, shoveling shit on a goat farm and then how I ended up in far Northern Saskatchewan out in the middle of nowhere in Canada. I'm going to get to that story in just a second. I'm going to wait a little bit longer in case anyone else wants to join in. And in the meantime, I just want to shout out to all my friends and family here in Australia. That's you, Fliss. And everybody else who's been messaging me and keeping me company, I'm so excited to see you all again when I finally get let out of this hotel room that I'm trapped in. And especially shout out to Cassie who actually got all Uber Eats sent to my room this morning. I really appreciate that. Got a few little healthy snacks, which is awesome to uh, keep me fed because the food in here is not my favorite. So it's really nice to get some tasty, healthy food delivered. So thank you so much, Cassie. And thank you to everyone who's been sending me some love. Uh, can't wait to see you all real soon. But today, I'm going to tell you the story of what was happening when I was living in Canada and coronavirus struck. Because we lost our jobs, the mountains closed, uh, we all had to kind of isolate in our houses, as you would understand wherever you are in the world. I'm sure you went through something similar. But a lot of people were going back to Australia and there was a call for Australians to go home. And you know, my family and friends were urging me to come home. I was pretty comfortable where I was at the time and I wasn't sure what to do. Uh, flights were pretty expensive, it was pretty tricky. There was lots to go through, lots of hoops to jump through and I couldn't figure out what to do. So what I ended up doing, I decided to stay, obviously. And what I wanted to do to make ends meet was essentially go and work on a farm. So I joined the Woofers online, WWOF, Worldwide Opportunities for Organic on organic farms, where you can basically live and work on a farm in return for accommodation and food. So I went and looking for farms and I found this one farm, it was a couple hours away in the shoe shop. It was a goat farm and it looked really cool. It sounded really beautiful. And I decided to go there and I called them up and they said, well, look, how do you feel about, you know, shoveling a bit of shit? And I was like, ah, oh, that's fine. I've done that before, piece of cake. You know, I just think in like cleaning out the pens daily, that's not a problem. But no, 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 it was years and years worth of accumulated shit that we had to, to dig out and load up trucks and then deliver the trucks of manure to other farms and then unload. Literally, my job was shoveling shit all day, every day, 25 wheelbarrows of shit, goat shit, would fill up the back of the ute. And then we would drive the ute to another farm and then shovel 25 wheelbarrows of shit off the ute onto people's gardens. All of that for like $50, which went to the farmers, not to us. That was what we did in return for a bed for the night and uh, three meals a day. So, I shoveled a lot of shit. This time last year, I was living on a goat farm in the middle of Canada, shoveling goat shit. 
And to top it all off, the lovely couple that lived on the farm. Don't get me wrong. I, I had a good time there. They fed us well. They took care of us. Cal and Becky, uh, Beckleby Farm, they were lovely. But they were nudists, right? So, you know, you'd be, <laughs> not all the time, but, you know, on a nice sunny day, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to go find Cal out in the garden. And you go out to the garden, and there's just this naked 70-year-old man watering the plants. <laughs> hey, Cal. Good to see you, bud. Hello. <laughs> So that was pretty confronting at times, but uh, you know, we survived, we got through it and uh, shoveled a lot of shit. And then, you know, I did that for a couple of weeks and I was like, this isn't working. You know, I wasn't losing any money, but I wasn't making any money. I wasn't having the best time. And I heard these stories, mushroom picking season was coming in. And apparently in a good season, you can make 400, 500, $600 a day picking mushrooms. G'day, James. I like that you went camping. That seems smarter than uh, shoveling shit. But yeah, mushroom picking. You can make hundreds of dollars a day by walking in the forest and picking mushrooms. Sounds lovely. Morel mushrooms is what we were going for. G'day, Mary Rose. Good to see ya. And the nearest mushroom picking season was happening in Manning in northern Alberta. Now, that was about 1,500 kilometer drive. It's a bit of a mission, but we we're like, hell, why not? We'll go get rich, live out in the forest, don't have to worry about COVID, we can just pick mushrooms all day. So I drove all the way out to Alberta, to Manning, Alberta, and went and lived at this old bushfire. Hey Mary. I went and lived uh, basically in a burnt down forest, because that's where the morale mushrooms grow. And the mushrooms hadn't started growing yet, this is mid-May last year. So we waited, we waited, a couple days, a couple weeks, and they just wouldn't grow. We're just waiting for the right conditions, right? You're waiting for the right conditions. And, you know, every day, you know, we try. We go out walking in the forest for a few hours. And you could spend six, seven hours walking out in the forest. And you would barely pick enough mushrooms to make 20 bucks for a whole day's work. Wandering out in the forest. And it was, wasn't terrible. Don't get me wrong. You're just walking in the bush at the end of the day. But and you have to come home, cook some food, camp in a tent. Anyway, we just sat there for weeks, drinking beer, talking rubbish, waiting for the mushrooms that never came. G'day, Carly. Lovely to see you. If you're just jumping in now, I am telling the story of how I ended up picking mushrooms out in the middle of nowhere in Canada. But they weren't growing. There was no mushrooms growing. Um, I saw my first bear out there. That was really cool. First ever bear I saw was this cute little baby bear about the size of a French bulldog. And... Stacker, good to see you, mate. I miss you, bud. I'll see you guys real soon. Um, oh, Terry's here too, mate. And Charlie, oh my God, Josh, so many people watching. Good to see you all. I'm telling the story of the first ever bear I saw, so just shut up for a minute. Hey, Catherine. Uh, this cute little bear, about the size of a French bulldog, which Terry, you'd appreciate. And it was just like rumping across the street. It looked so freaking cute. This is the first bear I'd ever seen. I was like, holy crap, that's a bear? why are people so scared of bears? And I was about to get out of the car and go and see it. And my friend said, no, don't go near that bear. The mum's going to come out and murder you. So I did. I admired this baby little bear from a distance. It was really cute. The next day, I woke up at like six o'clock in the morning to go to the toilet. And I climbed out of my tent. And there was a big fuck off black bear about three meters away from me, just staring at me. And it had gotten into our food tent, which was just next to our sleeping tent. And it ate all the chocolate, all the cheese, all the soy milk, all the good stuff, basically. This bear had just come in, eaten and drunk everything like a bastard. And then it false charged me. And, and then, you know, we banged some things together and ran away. And that was my first experience with a real bear. And okay, I get it. When they're a bit bigger, pretty scary. Especially when you just, you know, you just kind of wake up and you just need to go to the toilet. Like, whoa, holy Jesus. Anyway, after like a month living out in the forest, getting terrorized by bears and not finding any mushrooms, I was, I was over. I was over mushroom picking. I was ready to go back to Revelstoke and just try and resume life there. And then the mushroom picker said, well, wait, there's one more bushfire. 
Another 1,500 kilometers further away, there's another bushfire and there will be mushrooms there, we promise. And I was like, oh, do we turn around and go 1,500 kilometers back to Revelstoke or do we go 1,500 kilometers further away to another bushfire to keep trying to find mushrooms? Well, we didn't want to miss out. So we went to the next fire and I don't know if you know what Canada looks like. We drove across from Alberta into Saskatchewan and then in Saskatchewan, we went to the northernmost town on the map. It's called Laloche. And when you get to Laloche, you go off onto a dirt road and then drive another 200 kilometers further north, right up to the middle of nowhere. Shut up, Sam, I'm going live right now. 200 kilometers further north than the northernmost town in Saskatchewan. That's where we went to find more mushrooms. And do you think there was mushrooms there? No, there wasn't. We drove all the way there, we got flat tires, we spent all of our money on more camping gear and beer and food to survive up in the middle of nowhere because we were gonna find mushrooms and strike gold and, and get rich and it didn't happen. And we spent another week up there fishing, sitting around, talking rubbish, not finding mushrooms and basically <laughs> turned around and drove all the way back to Revelstoke, the 3000 kilometers all the way back. G'day, Anala, good to see ya. We drove, <laughs> broken, broken and bruised. We gave up on finding mushrooms and we went all the way back to Revelstoke with no money, with negative money, actually. We lost quite a bit, but it was a hell of an experience. And I got back to Revelstoke with no job, nowhere to live, lost quite a bit of money and feeling pretty sorry for myself. And what did I do next? Well, that's tomorrow's story. But thanks so much for listening today about how I became a goat farmer, shoveling shit, and how I ended up living in a tent in the middle of nowhere in Canada, trying to find mushrooms and getting terrorized by bears. That's what happened today. And tomorrow I'm gonna to tell you how I got back on my feet and uh, went into another epic season at, um, into another epic season at uh, in Revelstoke. But that's tomorrow's story. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I've been making live videos every day in quarantine. I'm going live at 11 a.m. West Australia time, 1 p.m. East Australia time, 8 p.m. Pacific time, and 4 a.m. if you're in the UK, which looks like my UK friend's not here today. It's pretty disappointing. Oh, well, should probably watch it later. Anyway, feel free to check out those videos on YouTube and Instagram. I'll be going live again same time tomorrow. Hope to see you there. Send me a message, leave a comment, and let me know what you think. If you're enjoying these stories, if you have any specific stories you want me to tell, or if you have any questions you want me to answer, let me know and I'll do that tomorrow. And I want to leave you with one more bit of advice. It's a quote that I found from Seneca. This would be pretty lame. But Seneca said, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. And I think that's true. We're not really suffering. If you feel like you're suffering, think about it. I feel like I'm suffering. I'm locked here in a hotel room. But I get meals delivered three times a day. I get a really comfy bed. I got plenty of stuff to do. I got internet so I can talk with all you guys. You know, whatever situation you're in, if you feel like you're suffering, it's probably more in your head than what it is in real life. So, you know, appreciate what you've got. Enjoy life. Enjoy the sunshine if you can get it, because I sure can't. And uh, yeah, I'll be going live same time tomorrow, guys. Love you all and hope to see you again tomorrow. Cheers.